Okay, these are some more notes from uh, section 7.1. And this is calculating, uh, this is example three, and this is from exa exercise example number one they want you to do. Actually, it's a, 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 we did number two, but it's the same. Uh, calculating the total distance traveled, so the TDD, I called it, that was the summation uh, of the little increments of velocity over the time. And that's on zero to five from that example one and two. So the total distance traveled is just the integral from zero to five of this velocity of uh, TDT. If we go back and look at our other notes, you can see we talked about that. As the total distance traveled, that was over here. Remember the total distance traveled was again the summation of these little increments of velocity over the time. Uh, that's over AB. So this is the velocity over time. Now remember this is going to be in some kind of unit like feet per second and this will be time second so that's going to be a strange uh, unit so you have to kind of convert that at the end. They kind of avoided that in this problem but in the next one it does come up so we'll talk about that. So again the total distance travel is just that integral so this was the problem so we're going to go from 0 to 5 and this was the this was the function and this was t squared minus 8 over t plus 1 squared and we're taking the absolute value of that and uh, these are kind of tricky to do analytically without a calculator because you don't know where it's above the graph and where it's below the graph so you would actually have to graph it and take a look at it and then break this this uh, interval up into portions where this is above the graph or below the uh, above the x-axis or below the x-axis and the part that's negative or below the ne x-axis we, we would have to negate that in order to take the absolute value so it's a lot easier to use the calculator needless to say so that's basically what they did in example three over on page uh, 381, they just used the calculator uh, and the numerical integral. And this was the function, the absolute value, and the, with respect to t from 0 to 5, and this is what they got. So this was the total distance traveled for example 1. Okay. And it looks like some of it might have been negative because this is not like where our displacement ended up. We ended up at 44 so it looks like we might have got a little bit left for a while then back okay and you could graph it and see probably some of it's going to be under the x-axis okay and then um, the next one this is uh, example four and they say um, a car moving with initial velocity of five miles per hour accelerates at the rate of a of t equals 2.4 t miles per hour per second for 8 seconds. How fast is the car going when it's 8 seconds, when the 8 seconds are up? And how far did the car travel during those 8 seconds? Okay, so this is my initial velocity. Let me get up here. There you go. See that? So my initial velocity is 5. So at 0 seconds, I'm going 5 miles per hour. This is my acceleration function. And that's miles per hour per second. And that's for 8 seconds. Okay, so I'm accelerating this many miles per hour per second. Okay, so after one second, I'm going probably about, what, 7.4. And then after two seconds, I've accelerated twice that. So 4.8, about 9.8 after two seconds, etc. So that's what's happening, the velocity after eight seconds. So the change in velocity, is this going to be the acceleration times the time applied? That's going to be the change in velocity. So this might be in miles per hour times seconds, because it's time, so it's going to be interesting to see how that works out. Okay, so we can figure this out. This is basically, we're going to sum up all these little increments using this Riemann technique. We're going to sum up all these little increments of acceleration times the, the time. That's going to give us a new velocity. Okay, over the eight seconds. And this, we interpret this Riemann sum as being this, this integral. So we're just going to find our change in velocity. Will be the integral from 0 to 8 of a of t dt. So that's, that's not too hard. So we'll just take the integral from 0 to 8 of 2.4 d dt. 2.4 t dt. And that again is the change in velocity. So we just take the antiderivative and go from 0 to 8. And then uh, if I put 8 in here, that's 64, 1.2 times 64. If I put 0 in here, that's 0, minus 0. So that's 76.8 miles per hour. So that's the change in my velocity. 
Okay, that's a change in my velocity. Okay. And then that's going to be added to my initial velocity, which was 5, because this is my, my change of velocity, and this was my 5, so 5 miles per hour plus 76.8 miles per hour means I'm going 81.8 miles per hour. So that was the actual velocity. Okay, so that's the velocity after 8 cents. I'm after 8 seconds, not 8 cents. After 8 se seconds, that's the velocity. My initial velocity, which is 5 miles per hour, plus the change of velocity, 76.8 miles per hour, ends up 81.8 miles per hour. Okay, now finding the distance traveled. Remember, we talked about this up at the first page of notes we gave you. Okay, the total distance traveled was would be the integral from A to B over an interval A to B would be the uh, integral from A to B of the absolute value of the velocity, dt. So we want to find the, the total distance traveled. We need the velocity function. Now, we don't have the velocity function. We have the acceleration function. So there's a couple ways to go at this. Um, I'm kind of doing it kind of the way I did with the uh, differential equations. It's a little bit more straightforward. Uh, the book kind of uses that method that we talked about back in section 5.4, but you can refer to that if you'd like. But this, I think, is a little bit easier to follow. Remember, A of t equals dv dt. All right? And dv dt, or A of t, A of t was 2.4t, so that means dv dt is 2.4t. And I've got initial, uh, when t is 0, um, dv dt is 5. Okay, so I can set this up. Or I've got, excuse me, when... Um, Velocity, when t is 0, the velocity is 5, pardon me, the velocity is 5, okay? So I've got that initial position. So let's take a look at this. And if we take uh, dv dt, I just put the dt up on the top, equals 2.4t dt, and then I can take the antiderivative of both sides, so I get the velocity as a function of time equals 2.4t dt. All right, then I can take the antiderivative of this, and that's going to be, as an indefinite integral, uh, Add 1, so that's going to be t squared divided by 2 is going to be 1.2 t squared plus c. Now, the thing is I have to have the velocity function. I don't have the velocity as a function of time, so that's what I'm finding here. And I do have the initial condition. I know when t is 0, velocity is 5. So I can put 5 in here, 0 there, and c, so it ends up being that c is equal to 5. So I can put the 5 back here, and this is what I have. So this is my velocity function, 1.2 t squared plus 5. So now my total distance traveled on this interval 0 to 8 will be the integral from 0 to 8 as of this formula of the absolute value of v of t dt. And I do have the v of t dt. And that's going to be 1.2t squared plus 5. Now it says the absolute value. So I could put absolute value bars there, but do I really need them? Well, t is always going to be positive, so no problem. And 5 is positive, so that's going to just be that. Now when I take the antiderivative, it's going to be the same thing. Um, since t is always positive, I'm going from 0 to 8. This will be positive. So I take the antiderivative. If I add 1 to 2, I get 3. If I divide 1.2 by 3, I get 0.4. And that's plus 5t from 0 to 8. Now the thing is that this was in miles per hour, and this is in seconds, so I have this strange unit, miles per hour times seconds. Okay, that's down here. Let's get that up so you can see that. So I've got miles per hour times second miles per hour times second. So we don't normally see that. Now the way we calculate this is uh, you can uh, you could put your 8 in there and multiply by 0.4 plus 5t and you could you could get this just putting it in your calculator. It's no problem. Okay, so we get 244.8 miles per hour times seconds. So I got 244.8 miles per hour k okay, times seconds. And I put the hours per hour and the seconds over here and then I put this factor hour per second so I can get these some of these things to cancel. And I know I have one hour per 3,600 seconds. So one over 36 hours per second. So that's that makes sense, right? One hour per 3,600 seconds. And look what happens. The hours cancel, the seconds cancel, and all that's left is miles. And then if I divide 244.8 by 3,600, I get 0 .068 miles. So that's how far we actually travel. That's the total distance we actually traveled during those eight seconds. Now the tricky thing is you do have to have the velocity function. Velocity has a function of time. 
So you can get that from the acceleration function. And then, like I said, there's a couple ways to do that. I think the book does it a little bit differently, but they end up with the same thing. I think this is a little bit more um, deductive. This, this makes a little bit more sense to do it like this, for me, deductively. Okay? So I hope that helps. And if you have any questions, uh, just email me and let me know. I think the homework problems that I went over are, are fairly explicit in their explanations. But again, anytime you have any questions on any of the problems I've done on, on video, please let me know so I can clear that up or maybe just make a new video. Okay, good luck.